G'day folks, Ben from Snowies here today. I have for you the Companion Aqua Heat Lithium Iron Portable Shower. Now this unit seems to operate really well with very little fuss, it just looks after itself. You turn it on, you set the temperature and it light and goes out and maintains that temperature without any messing around. So when you buy your Aqua Heat Lithium um, shower, you get an instruction manual with it and a little replacement fuse. I'll show you where that goes shortly. You get the main unit here, you don't get the gas included with it, you need to buy that separately. There's these containers, we'll go in a bit more on that shortly as well. There's a 1.5 meter hose and power lead that goes to the water pump here. A two and a half meter um, hose that goes to the shower rows here. And you get a five meter 12 volt lead, DC lead that goes to a cigarette plug. If you wanna charge this off 240 volts, there's a 240 volt adapter that comes as an accessory. Now the unit itself with all the accessories weighs about seven and a half kilos. So everything included here is seven and a half kilos. You throw the gas bottle in, it's gonna weigh a little bit more. Measures about 44 centimeters in length, about 16 centimeters in width this way and around about 38 centimeters in height. It's made of a combination of a, a durable plastic and metal. So these are metal panels on the side here and on the other side. And then all of this that you see here is a really durable plastic. Nice and easy to carry on with this big handle on the top here. Operating port on the front or operating um, features on the front here where we plug everything in. On the side, we've just got vents at the rear. This is where our gas bottle and we can also charge it. We've also got a little fuse here. So that fuse that I showed you before, replacement fuse, if that happens to blow, comes out of this little spot here, easy to replace. And then on the other side, you've got, uh, once again, metal panel and vents top and bottom. Now to set it up, first thing we're gonna do is attach a gas bottle. Now this is a um, disposable 450 or 468 gram propane gas bottle. You get, uh, it's measured in, um, the gas output is measured in uh, megajoules per hour, which is 90 megajoules per hour, which I don't know the science behind getting the formula right, but I think that means around about an hour of use out of one of these canisters, and that depends on what setting you've got it on. Now you can attach this to larger, say nine kilo bottles, because this will screw into a regulator that's built into the unit up here. If you want to attach this to a, say a nine kilo LPG bottle, you just need to get a hose that goes from this fitting here, a BOM fitting, out to a 3 8 BSP or a POL fitting that goes to a nine kilo gas bottle. So you can just have a hose coming directly out of here and to a larger refillable gas bottle. But having this uh, means it's ultimately portable. The only attachment you've got apart from this are the hose that goes to the water source. So to attach this, we put it up into the regulator here and just screw it, making sure it doesn't cross thread should screw in easily. We don't need to do it up really tightly, just firmly so we can feel it bite. I can just hear that hiss a little bit there now, do it up firmly and the gas sits comfortably at the back there. And one other thing just to show you at this end uh, before I disappear is the red port here, which is the charge port. Now the battery gives about 45 to 50 minutes of runtime and about four to five hours to charge it up. You can run the unit while it's charging. It'll double the amount of, or double the time it'll take to charge the battery, but you've got that option to either run it with or without it being plugged in. But once the battery's charged, 45 to 50 minutes, completely free of being need, uh, of having this attached to a power source. Now this easily attaches the red plug to the red port on the bottom there. Plug that in there, plug that into a cigarette port, and that'll start charging the battery. At the moment though, the battery's charged inside here. We'll show you on the, lay on the little display on the front. The only attachments I need to worry about are the water inlet and outlet, which are at the bottom here. So we've got water inlet, which is the pump. So the pump has a combination of the water hose and a power cord, because the, the pump needs power as well. To push this on, it's got a little collar on the, on the um, connection here. Pull this back and push it on as far as it will go and then push this collar down so it locks into place. We can then plug this into the power outlet there. Just make sure it's off. Don't turn this on. Make sure all this is off at the moment. The pump's not in the water. We don't want that to run. Then grab the water outlet and do the same thing. No power associated with this one. So pull the collar back, slide it on, push that collar down to lock it on and we're good to go. Now I've got some water here ready to go because we just need a water source to drop the pump into. Now the unit's designed to work with water of 20 degrees or below. The maximum temperature the water will be raised to is 30 degrees above ambient. So if we've got 20 degrees in there, it's not gonna go above 50, but it does actually cut out at 50 degrees anyway. So if the water reaches 50 degrees, the unit will cut out and it won't cut back in again until the water comes down to about 45 degrees. Pump drop in the water here. So we're just gonna recycle water from the from here and back into here. 
I'm going to get this started. I'll just hold this over the, the water here and I'm actually going to move away from over the unit because a bit of heat comes out from the sides here. So I'm actually got nothing flammable above it. Now you want to make sure this is in the off position. So we've got on at the bottom, off up here. The unit won't fire up unless there's water flow in it. So the burner will stay out or it won't light unless there's actually water flowing through the unit. That's a safety measure for the unit here. If we come to the unit here, there's a, a power button on this side here. We press that and the display lights up and it shows us inlet temperature and outlet temperature. The water's quite warm at the moment because it's been sitting in the car. Um, this side will show us the outlet temperature, which is how hot it is at the shower rows as it burns. We'll turn this right up with this knob here as we go to see if we get it to cut out because it will cut out at around about 50 degrees. We'll give, give or take a little bit. Above that, we've got the battery monitor. This shows us the battery is fully charged. To the left of that is what will be a red symbol, which is a sort of a flame that indicates that the burner inside is lit up. And then on the other side of that is a little temperature with a sort of line through it. That will come on if the temperature reaches that cutout point. We'll try and see if we can turn it up and get it to do that. So to start it, we then press the start button, which is on the other side here. We press that one. The pump has started and I could hear the igniter inside click a few times, but it stopped because there's no water flowing through the unit. When I turn this on, the water's going to flow through the unit. We'll hear the ignite, the, the piezo igniter inside auto, um, it'll start automatically and then we'll hear the burner ignite. So I'll flick this around. You can hear that. And the a puff of gas, this is now showing that the, light, the a unit is lit inside and the water temperature is going up. So that's at 35 degrees now, it's warm. It's not gonna to get too much water, probably around about 40 degrees at the lowest setting there. Now to turn that up, we just turn this around. Now this isn't gonna increase the water flow. The water flow stays at about two and a half, two to two and a half liters per minute. As I turn this around, I can actually hear the gas inside roaring um, a little stronger. It almost sounds like a gas stove in there now. So we can see that's pushed right up. It'll probably just go over 50 degrees. And eventually, it's getting quite hot there now. 53, that should cut out any second now. There's a margin of error in this. There we go, and now that's actually cut out. So the burner has stopped. Inside there, there's an error message that's saying it's cut out. Now that won't cut back in again until it reaches 40, well there we go, it's dropped down to 45 and it's lit back up again. So it's automatically just cycling through, not allowing the water to heat up to a dangerous temperature, but maintaining it at around about that 45 to 55 degree temperature. So it's gonna heat right up again and it's gonna cut out again. So at this setting, we really don't need this right up on maximum because that's just gonna cut out again. We probably can turn it down so that it sits at around about that 45 to 50 degree temperature and that's as hot as it's gonna get. So at the moment, this is just cycling through this water, continually warming up the water inside the unit here. It's flicked back on again now, so really automatic, really simple to use. Just turn it on, set and forget. You can't use any other pump. You can only use the pump that comes with the unit for this. So this will go, I'll turn that off and this should all cut out now. So the burn is cut off, the pump is still going, but that will turn off when we press the power button here. So if we turn everything off now, the pump's now turned off. So you've got to use this pump with the unit. You can't attach it to any sort of different pump. It's designed to use with this and with the fittings that go into the unit here. Shower rows, use the same shower rows because the, out, the outflow of this is all designed to work in conjunction with the, the sensors and everything inside here to make sure it operates efficiently. And this unit seems to operate really well with very little fuss. It just looks after itself. You turn it on, you set the temperature and it lights and, and, and goes out and maintains that temperature without any messing around. So you don't need to worry about adjusting flows and gas flows and all those sort of things. Also a really great benefit is that it's so portable. So if I've had my shower now, I could take this back to the car, plug it in, charge the battery back up and it's good to go. But in reality, the amount of runtime you've got off of a gas cylinder here and the battery inside, you're gonna get a family shower in one night, charge it back up again and you're good to go. So a really portable and functional unit. We've had no problems with these so far. Um, showers can be finicky. This is the exception to the rule. The only downside is it probably hasn't got quite the same flow rate that a lot of showers do, but that two and a half liters per minute is gonna give you a pretty good shower. And if it maintains that temperature, that's the main thing when you're trying to have a shower in the bush. That is the Companion Aqua Heat Lithium Iron Rechargeable Shower. You can find these online at snowies.com.au where you'll find them at our lowest prices every day. But if you have any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel for all of our latest and greatest information or check out some other cool companion products like this one down here.